Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you the absolute basics of rigid body physics in Blender 4.3. Now this is a fantastic beginner tutorial and by beginner I do mean you already know like the very basics of Blender but you've never touched rigid body simulations. It's actually a lot simpler than you think so we're going to start with a little example and we're going to work our way up with a slightly more advanced version which is just these cubes stacked on top of each other and then just this sort of a cannonball shooting through. So there's a lot of really key fundamental mental things we're going to be learning in this tutorial. Fantastic for beginners. Um, so like I said, jump into Blender. I'm using Blender 4.3. You could still do it with an older version of Blender, but I think it's always good to be up to date. So if you can get yourself a copy of Blender 4.3 or newer, this will be fantastic. So let's jump in. And just so you quickly know as well, um, I will be showing you exactly how to make this animation, but I'll kind of just do a quick overview on how I add these materials and lights because the main tutorial here is not about the lighting and rendering or animation, it's just about how to get a physics simulation. So yeah, let's jump in and I think you'll really enjoy this. So with a new scene open up in Blender, I'm gonna be using Blender 4.3. I think we're gonna demonstrate the absolute basics. So to simplify things, we'll just delete the camera here by selecting it and also the default light, just like both of them and press delete. And let's just take our default cube here for once. We won't be deleting it. We're gonna go G and then Z, move it up until it's sitting above our floor. And then let's just simply go Shift A. Let's go to our mesh options and just quickly add in a plane. And with this plane, we're just gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna go S to scale. And just so you understand a basic concept with um, Blender's physics simulation is then wherever we're scaling something in object mode, Okay, it's actually, if you press N and you go over to your item, you can see here it affects your transforms when you scale in object mode, which is gonna affect your physics. So one way you can do this is scale in object mode if you want, but then go Control A and apply that scale. Otherwise, it's simply just a matter of going into edit mode and scaling inside of there. So in that case, I'm just gonna go and scale it up like this, but I think that was worth mentioning, especially if you're really new to this sort of Blender physics. So we have two very, very simple concepts here. So going back into object mode, we have a cube and we have a floor. And what we wanna do now is make this cube fall on the floor. So what we need to do is select any object. So we're gonna to go to our cube first. We're gonna go over to our physics tab over here in our properties. And we're simply gonna to go to this little tab here called rigid body. So clicking on it, it now adds a property to this, rigid body property. And you're gonna notice once you've added the rigid body under the drop down here, there's a type. And at the moment it's set to active. That's just letting it know that this rigid body needs to actually move or have the physics enacted on it when we run our um, animation. However, if we were to change the type here to passive, that just means that the object still has physics properties. So things can interact with it, but it's gonna be sitting passive. So for now we wanna make the type active because this is gonna be falling. However, if we select our floor over here and we go to our physics and give that a rigid body, we don't want our floor to just fall in the world space. So we're gonna go ahead and change that one to passive. So now if we go over here to our timeline and we make sure we're in frame one or zero, we can now hit the space bar and we can see that our cube falls. Now there's something really interesting that I want to mention here, which I think is worth noting as well if you're a beginner. If you go back to frame one and let's say for example, we select our cube we go over to our rigid body, we're gonna scroll down here to the collisions. Now by default, the collision here is set to convex hull, okay? So I'm gonna quickly also demonstrate by going Shift A, and I'm gonna go add in a Suzanne monkey head, and I'm just gonna go ahead and move that up next to the cube. I'm gonna take this Suzanne monkey head and also give that a rigid body. Make sure it's set to active, which it is. And if I now come to frame one and hit the space bar, you can see both these objects fall, like so. Okay, but if we wanted a more accurate simulation, you can see this monkey here, it's not falling properly because you can see these ears um, should be touching the ground. It would tip one way or the other in a real situation. And the reason is because the convex hole here is just an approximization. So what we really wanna do is come here to the shape and we wanna change it to mesh, which means it's gonna be actually using the mesh of the geometry here. The actual geometry is a collision boundary. Okay, now this is a little bit more processor intensive. It um, does take more calculations, but it's gonna give you a better result. So if we now go back to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can now see that our simulation is behaving a lot more accurately 
with a lot more detail. So in the instance of a cube, which is pretty much in and of itself, almost like a bounding box or a boundary, uh, we could leave it at convex hole, that'd be fine. We could even come here to the shape and change it to box, which is very efficient. Also, we could go shift A, we could add in a UV sphere. And with a UV sphere, moving this up, we could always give that a rigid body. And we can come here to the shape and make that a sphere. So something like a box and a sphere, they have these very special situations where you can use a box or a sphere, which are gonna work really efficiently and effectively with the shape. However, with a more complicated object like the Suzanne monkey head, um, a mesh interaction here for the most part would be far more accurate. That being said, the same goes for our collision object. So we got our passive plane here, which we've changed to passive. Currently, this is set to convex hull, which works fine. But if we were to tab into edit mode, and if I were to at any point grab, for example, these two verts and extrude them up and then tab back out, if I now go to frame one and hit the space bar, you can see these objects are going to slide down because once again, it's an approximization, kind of like a bounding region. So what I would have to do then is come here to the shape and change it to mesh and then go back. And now we can see that we have a lot more accuracy here. Okay, now it bounced off the ender, but don't worry about it. We're just gonna go back to frame one. Another thing worth mentioning is if you select an object and you go over to your collisions, there's gonna be something called a sensitivity. If you go to the drop down. So in this case, there's a margin of 0 0.04. If I, for example, increase this to 0 0.5 and then go to frame one and hit the space bar, you can see the monkey kind of bounces head because now there's a massive collision distance here between the two. So I might make it like 0 0.1, for example. Go back to frame one, hit the space bar, uh, which is not ideal either. So what we want to do with this margin sensitivity, if we make it like 0 0.005, that's much smaller. So now uh, we have a more accurate kind of collision here. Okay, but for the most part, as a beginner, you're not going to worry about that too much at first. It should work just fine. So you can see here, this is the general basic beginner concepts of rigid body physics in Blender. So with that out of the way, I think we know enough now to actually make a little scene where we're gonna stack some cubes and then kind of shoot a cannonball and kind of knock them over. A really good beginner exercise um, that's also a ton of fun. Let's select all of the objects here and press delete. Let's go shift A, let's add in a mesh plane. We're now gonna just go S to scale it and type in 10 to make it 10 times bigger. Because we scaled it in our object mode, we're gonna go control A and we're just gonna apply our scale. Then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a cube. And we're gonna go with this cube and go S.2 and hit enter. So S.2 to make it smaller. And we're gonna go control A and apply to scale. And then in our front view, we're gonna go G, Z and hold in control. And as we hold in control, we're gonna snap it. We're gonna snap it till it sits on top of the floor here, like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our modifier. We're gonna go add modifier, search and type in array. And let's just give this under the X factor, just a tiny little bit of distance. And then let's give it a count of 10. Or you can go smaller, I might go with eight. And then let's go ahead to the drop down and um, duplicate this modifier. And then over here, let's come to the X factor and make it zero. And let's come here to the Y and make that, let's go maybe to the negatives here. Let's just keep dragging that till we get the spacing we're looking for, there we go. So we've got a row of eight here as well. So eight by eight. And then let's just minimize these and let's come to this one and duplicate that one. Come to the drop down, and let's give this um, zero on the Y. Now let's just give it a value on the Z. So keep dragging till we kind of see it like so. But with this one, I might just give it a count of like five, okay? Pretty cool, and at any point you could come here and decrease or increase the count. I might even come here to the top one and decrease it a bit to maybe five. So we have kind of like a stack like this. So I'm gonna to come to the drop down and just apply all of these. Okay, now we have the stack. We need to tab into edit mode and press A to select everything. And we're gonna go control B just to give it a bevel. There we go. And if everything's still active, we're gonna press F3, I'm gonna type in separate. I'm gonna go separate by loose parts. 
And then we're going to tab back out. And with all of these still active, we're going to press F3 and type in origin to, and we're going to click on origin to geometry so they all have the origin points in the center, which is also really important. Okay, so now let's go into our front view. Um, we want to add physics to these. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold in shift and just make sure one of them is the main active element. So you can see they're all active, but one of them is a different kind of yellow. And we're gonna come over here to our physics. We're gonna go rigid body, make sure it's active. We're gonna come to the shape and change it to box. There we go. And so all of these have the same property. We're gonna type in F3 and go copy. There we go, copy from and we're going to click on copy from active. Now we're going to click on a floor. We're going to go to our rigid body. We're going to come here to the type, make it passive, and we'll leave the shape as convex hull. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see all of these cubes fall. Okay. Now I'm going to just make sure to save this to my desktop. And now the cool thing is we're going to add in like a cannonball. So let's go into our front orthographic view. Let's go to frame one. We're going to go Shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options and add in a UV sphere. We're going to go S to scale it down about this much. And we're going to go Control A and apply to scale. Then we're going to right click and go Shade Smooth. And then we're going to go G in our front view and move it over to the side. Maybe way off over here. There we go. And we're going to come to frame one and we're going to go I to insert a keyframe. Now if you're using an older version of Blender, you might have a selection that pops up when you press I, in which case you're gonna click on the location option. In this case, it's just added in a keyframe. Then I'm gonna drag up to frame 20 and on frame 20, I'm gonna enable the auto keying. And on frame 20, I'm gonna go G and drag this just till it's in front of the stack of cubes here. And then I'm gonna turn off the auto keying. So what I have here, if I go to frame one or zero, if I hit the space bar, I have this. So now what we can do, which is really, really cool, is we can grab our cannonball here. We can go to our physics and give it a rigid body. And because we've animated this, we have to come here and make it animated. Okay, which is important. We're gonna come here to the shape and make it sphere. And if we now go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we want this at a certain point to not be animated, but actually become physics. So how do we do that? The way we're going to do that, we're going to come to frame 20 where we have our last keyframe. And with this animated property ticked, we're going to go ahead and click on this animated to, to give it a keyframe. And then we're going to go and move up one frame to frame 21. We're going to untick animated and then click on a keyframe to animate that property. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're going to see this is what we have. So at frame 20, it's still an animation with keyframe animation and 21, it becomes physics. Now you can see here, if we go to frame zero and we hit the space bar, it's, it's hitting our cubes here, but the problem is it just doesn't have enough mass. So the way we can fix this is to select our sphere. At the moment, it's just one kilo. Let's make it something like 1000 kilos. Let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. And now you can see it's a lot more destructive. So I'm gonna go back to frame one. And what I will do is just, I'm gonna select maybe all these cubes and in the top view, I'm just gonna move them more into the middle of my scene. There we go. And then from frame one, I'm gonna hit the space bar and seeing what that's looking like. Okay, that's good. What I might just do is select the ball here though. And with these keyframes active, I'm just gonna come here and select them and go G and maybe move them down to frame 10. So now it's moving a little bit faster and we've got a little bit more destruction. Okay, there we go. So you can see, boom, we've got our sphere coming through. Now, uh, the cool thing is at any point you can come and delete some of these cubes. So if you want a thinner wall, looks a little bit better, you can do that. Okay, but the cool thing is here, you now have this sort of action shot of a ball going through these cubes. The cool thing is you could even go and enable your auto keying again, come to your first keyframe, and then you could always change the position of your sphere if you want a different result. So I'll turn off the auto keying again. So now you can see it's coming from a more lower angle. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That is the basics of 
um, rigid body physics in Blender. So at this point, if you wanted to, you could go shift A and add in a camera and then just move your camera wherever you want. So just a standard kind of thing you do in Blender. Go and go to your render engine and change it to cycles. And I would go with a max sample of like 60, especially if you have denoising enabled. And then you can just go shift A, add in an area light under your light properties, give it some strength. So I'll go with 200. And then you can just go shift D to duplicate it as many times as you want, just to have some nice lighting in your scene. So this is not really about lighting and materials. So I'm just kind of showing you a basic view here. And then you can go Z and go rendered. And then with your camera, you can always go to your camera and adjust the focal length if you wish, however you want. Um, it's always nice to go ahead, add some depth of field, and then maybe add in something like an empty into your scene. And then with your camera, you can just go with the eyedropper and select that empty, and then drag down your f-stop value just to have some nice soft focus. Um, once again, this is all optional stuff, but I'll be showing you how easily you can turn this into a little scene. And then if you wanted to, you could just, um, I should probably just grab all these lights and just hide them. And I'm just gonna select all these cubes and press M, move them to a new collection and go create. That way I can just make sure they're all active in that collection and I'll select one. I'll go to my materials, go new, and I'll just call it cube. And then I'll go control L and just link all those materials. So they now all have that same material to which I'll give like a color. So in this case, I've made them all red. I'll go and bring back my objects by going Alt H. I know I'm doing this quickly, but like I said, this is not a lighting and materials tutorial. I'm just quickly showing you how quickly you can turn this into like a animation. And then I'll select this sphere and I'll go create a new material. Maybe make it metallic, bring down that roughness. Maybe give it kind of like a bluish kind of color. And you kind of get the idea. Very, very simple to create an animation and then give it some basic materials. So yeah, um, another thing that makes your physics look great in an animation is to go to your rendering engine, give it some motion blur. And then if you go and you get like a shot that looks really cool with a lot of movement, you can go render and just render that frame. And here you can see it has motion blur on it and the rest of these cubes also have a bit of blur. And it just makes it look a lot more interesting. So yeah, that has been the physics of um, rich bodies in Blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this beginner's tutorial and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.